let's talk about relational notation. The purpose of relational notation is to document the design of database tables. I prefer to involve those who will be using the database in the design process. No one understands the problems to be solved better. I begin with a brainstorming session because there's no better way to solicit thoughts and ideas from a group of people. You will need a secretary to record ideas and a facilitator to ask probing questions and draw out lurkers and wallflowers. You want a free flow of ideas, so no judging and no criticizing. Brainstorming at a school is likely to get you ideas like these. Begin your analysis after the brainstorming session by identifying entities and attributes and eliminating any values that can be computed. GPA or grade point average is derived through division, so I've deleted it. Two attributes of students clearly stand out and so we'll begin with that table. Relational notation begins with the name of an entity followed by brackets. Attributes are listed within the brackets. Remember, each entity must have a unique identifier within its table, a primary key. Neither of these attributes are good candidates for a primary key. So let's consider what other attributes might we want to track for the student entity. We've expanded our attributes, but I still don't see a primary key candidate. We can add a new attribute, student ID, to serve as the primary key. In relational notation, the primary key is the first attribute listed and it's underlined. Repeat this process until you have defined all of the tables and have reached consensus with your user group. You learned how to use relational notation to document a table in a way others can understand. Next time, we'll design more tables and discuss relations in greater detail. Until then, thank you for studying with me.